Hi guys, Rod from VMN, the home of the Spaceship Plasma Cutter running Linux CNC's QT Plasma. Um, it's taken, <coughs> taken a long time before I've been confident to run QT Plasma, which is still in development in a production setting, but here we are. Um, we're going to just turn it on, do the e-stop thing, the power thing, um, home all. Now, there's a lot of features on this main screen and some of them are quite cool. One of the ones that I've just added this morning, which was um, based on an idea of mine that was adopted by the developers, was to um, um, this button here, which says load latest. Um, these buttons are all programmable, so except the top two, so you've got control over all the features that you want to do. So um, what load latest does is just assume that you've put um, a new G-code file from um, SheetCam or Fusion 360 into the um, G-code folder in Linux CNC um, and it's sitting over in here and we've actually got um, um, you can sort these into dates and name order and stuff like that but we don't really want to do that we can cancel that um, all we need to do is load the latest file so if we just put a file in there two minutes ago we'll just load it. There we go. So the other feature that we have here, um, I'll just go through some of these features here while we're on the screen. Uh, AMIC testing and probe testing are just features to do some troubleshooting. Um, frame the job is interesting. Um, if I go to zero, it just goes to zero, whatever I've got to be zero, zero. So that's just brought it over here on the sheet. Um, but now what I want to do is frame the job to make sure it's going to fit on the sheet. So I've got this running pretty quickly. You can control how fast it goes, but, and I'll just do it again. Um, basically what it does is run the laser around where the job goes. So you can see there it's going to fit just so we know we're good to go. So um, the other thing is We've got good support for rotated sheets. Now this one's going to be a bit tricky. I want to use my pendant one-handed. So so up here I'm going to press laser and mark the edge. And then what we can do now is come through to the front of the machine again. which looks like it's about there. Let's call it about there for the purpose of the exercise. So over here, we set the origin and Linux CNC has rotated the job so that it will follow that. So um, torches, so the torch is not enabled. So we'll cycle start just to run through that. You can see there it's tracking the edge of the sheet nicely. Very cool. So to reset that now, all we need to do is just click on this mark edge and set origin again and it will swap itself around. So very cool. Um, some of the other settings um, I like to um, have a feature to say park so that I can load the sheet um, and of course I want to be, bring it home again and go to zero um, now we'll just turn that around a bit so it looks roughly roughly about right um, and the other thing that's quite cool I use this one quite a bit is sever a sheet so um, it's remembered that so normally I've got a 1200 wide sheet here I've got the end of a job and I need to cut it off and index it on a small table so I can just cut a job um, 
here and it'll just go across at whatever cut speed is set. Um, so um, show offset, so if you really get confused um, and you're really into machining, you can show all the um, G-code offsets, which can be just clicked away and you can edit those there. Um, and you can set the zero position, um, jogging of course, up to 20 buttons, so I've got quite a few left. Um, they're customised. And uh, a complete conversational um, section, it's brought my job in. Um, so you probably start by clicking new to clear that and you can create all these shapes up here and you type it and you can add to a job so if you wanted to you could put two circles in there to make a flange and you could probably put and then you could put the um, bolt circle diameter um, pitch circle diameter around it with some bolt holes so um, back to main um, parameters up here we've got our materials so they're embedded in the machine um, and there is a way for sheet cam to send them. You can send them from a post processor as well. Um, you can either send them by um, um, the job number or the, the material number, or you can um, manually set all those settings there. Um, curve width, pierce height, pierce delay, all that. Um, over here, all our probing setup. Um, and um, our arc, how many times will it start if it drops out? It'll try um, three times three seconds apart. Um, and these settings are more for uh, various things. Over here, we've got the probing. I forgot to mention this. There's a skip here. So this is set for 50 millimeters. So it will skip um, um, initial height sensing. So it will skip. If it's probed 50 millimeters away, it won't probe now. Um, safe heights, um, torch height delay. This I um, have to change um, because there's been a change here which should, which we know is going to be very significant. Um, so it needs to be set to point about point 0.1 of a second um, and I'll just save that to remind me because what what we've done is that this is a delay after we get to cut speed um, so at, not from when we do the pierce so that means because because we're running Linux CNC, we know when we're at um, top velocity at our cut speed, so we can wait until then, um, and we hardly need any delay at all at that point. Um, so um, that's about it. Um, back to main. I'll just um, show you here. Just, we'll turn this um, plasma cutter on briefly. 120 amp thermal dynamics. Um, hopefully, we'll have some air left in here. It's saying it's got some air. It'll just be enough for a demo. Um, one of the other cool features we've got is the ability to, um, to when I find it, is to um, pulse the torch. Now, we must have, um, oh, I know what we've got to do. If the torch is enabled, the pulse torch button comes up and we can pulse a torch in case you've got cutting on a water table and you want to get the post flow running before you actually start the job or you want to make sure there's no material. So we just pulse it like that. Um, so now we've got that post flow running. So um, now the, the post flow is running there. You can see the, on the water. So um, that's going to keep water out when we start probing. Um, other settings up here, um, velocity anti-dive, um, void crossing, mesh mode, ignore OK, I've turned on ionic probing, that's about all I use, auto volts, 
um, I let Linux CNC sample the bolt and it will sample the, the bolts once it gets to cut speed and after the torch height delay is enabled. So it will check the bolts then. Um, there's absolutely no need to worry about things. You can actually override your voltage here. Um, and I've got that program to run, um, to run off the, my pendant um, if I need to do it on the, on the go. Um, um, severing the sheet I think I talked about. Pierce and cut I didn't talk about. Um, sometimes you want, on heavy material, say you're cutting 16mm, what you might want to do is do all the piercing first, so um, it takes, actually over here has taken the job away, um, and just left us with the piercers, and um, now it's back. So you pierce it, um, you can actually pierce it and then run the job again. Um, maybe sweep the, all the dross off the sheet, and change consumables to some good consumables and just use old consumables on the um, on the machine. Um, so now I'll just turn this off. We're running um, a two amp Sanyo Danko here that'll do 60 meters a minute um, with a three to one reduction. Um, the torch height control I made was the first thing I did with this. I figured if I could make that, I could make the rest of the table really easily. So there was about three months work just pottering away on my shirt in my spare time. Um, everything is rack and pinion. Um, the gantry ends behind the covers. Um, there's a NEMA 34, five to one belt reduction back onto um, linear rails and rack and pinion. Finally, back to my control panel. This has got a lot of stuff in it because I've been playing with it over the years um, but the main part of it is here from here to here is a MESA 7i76E um, control board runs by Ethernet. Um, it's got 30, uh, 32 inputs, 16 outputs, 5 step gens, um, spindle control, 0 to 10 volt and then an encoder for the spindle. Um, this smaller board, which is a bit hard to see because it's close together, it's only this wide um, from those white um, connectors there. This is a TH CAD, so what it does is it reads the torch voltage from the plasma cutter, um, converts it into a frequency, and then we send the frequency to the encoder input, which we don't need on a plasma cutter, and we can convert that frequency to a voltage which Linux CNC in turn they can control using its sophisticated PID control. There's another TH CAD here, over here again, for my ohmic sensing. Um, we, we measure the voltage from this thing here, little 24 volt power supply. Um, both this TH CAD and the power supply are rated for 500 volts over voltage, so way more than what a plasma cutter outputs. So what we can do though is we can physically see um, the voltage rising um, as the torch touches. So we've got very fine control over um, torch height control because we're doing it in software. Um, um, I used to have a 48 volt power supply in here but I've upgraded everything significantly and we're now running um, these LAM drivers, LAM Technologies drivers, they're made in Italy. So there's three 6 amp drivers across the top and one smaller 3 amp one down the bottom. Um, they're identical, just this one's a bit cheaper and that's what the guy carries in stock in Australia. Um, so um, that's about it. Um, We've put some stack lights up here, which I've got a checker still working on. I think I've probably broken that in the um, HAL configuration. So we had various statuses displaying here. So there you go, guys. That's a, um, our plasma cutter running on QT Plasmac with Linux CNC. And I think you'd have to agree that the number of features that we have in QT Plasmac is just way more than what you find in the average, um, the average controller. Um, <coughs> and the reason why we've got way more features 
is we've got total control within the PC and the PC is um, um, able to read everything about that. So the motion controller is doing the torch height control so we've got much better control and as far as um, computer goes I've got a small industrial PC with Wi-Fi here um, on the back which is running a um, Celeron J1900 um, 4 mega RAM and it shits it in um, so I've spent a fair bit of time just recently making Linux work with Windows in my front office and I've now got um, everything set up here so that I can remote into it. I've got an FTP server on this machine. I've got, um, 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 I can use Microsoft Terminal Services and run them remote, but I've got to log out of this machine, same as what you do in Windows. Um, and just recently I finally worked out after about five years how to share my home directory on Windows. So I've just been able to map a drive to this and I can just sit in my air-conditioned office, copy the files out, and, um, and come out here, press the load latest, and I'm ready for action. So thanks very much for watching. I'm probably taking far too much time, but I know you plasma guys want to see this stuff.